Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Jay Blair Brown Show, right here <laughs> on Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> I'm your host. And Biggest Pam here on Living a Dream with Jay Blair Brown. You can call me Juice. I generally have a slew of announcements before I get into um, our interview with our esteemed guest for today, Mr. Michael T. Williamson. But uh, I'm just going to give you guys our dial-in number, 347-539-5805. Mr. Williamson is on the air with us. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. How are you? Oh, I I am just fine now that I know you're on the air with us. You, had, you know, you had, had my heart going a little pitter-patter because I said, maybe I should have told him to call in a little bit before the show goes on the air. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's live radio, so it, it keeps me uh, more on my toes. That's right, now, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm excited to be on your show. I'm I'm really happy to be on the air with you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea... Last week, I had a gentleman on, uh, we were on with uh, Chaz Palminteri, ah. and someone who apparently knew you, and he started going on and on about you and finally said, well, this is not about Michael T. Williams, <laughs> oh, and that funny. is Mr. Tony Spiridakis. Oh, yes, okay. I know Tony very yeah. well. I, I miss Tony. I haven't gotten a chance to see him too much. Well, he has such a high accolades for you, Till. I was wondering, well, maybe I should have had Michael T. on the show before I had Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he went on and on and on, but uh, he just high regards for you. Oh, that's uh, now, very kind. You know, I, I have to apologize because um, in doing the research to have you on the show, I found out so much more about you. I thought I knew all there was to know about you. And, of course, that was not the case. I mean, you know, going through, I'm, I'm big on IMDb. So going through that IMDb uh, page, I don't know who keeps that up for you, but they're doing an awesome job. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have my niece here with me. She's she's my niece's sister. And uh, she was going through it. She was like, History Blues, really? <laughs> The White Shadow? I mean, she was so thrilled. And um, the the one thing that she said to me, which was kind of a slap in the face to me, she said, um, well, I didn't know he was as old as he is. So I asked when you were born, and you're older than me. So I go, so you thought he was younger than me? And apparently she did. She thought you were uh, around her age. You look good. That's the reason why. <laughs> well, thank you. You know they say so, black don't crack. Yeah, that's right. That well, mine must have cracked. But uh, <laughs> she, she's forty, and she she really thought that you were her age. So you carry it well. You carry it very well. Um, uh, but I, I want to get started on this interview because our show really caters to up and coming independent uh, filmmakers and actors, and so it's really important that guys like you who have lived it, who's continuing to live it, you know, leave them with some hope and tell them, uh, you know, what what you've done. Maybe someone can, can model their uh, pattern, their uh, career after yours, which is a, it's just stellar. So we want to get started on that. And, and, and just take it from the beginning. How did you get into acting? Well, you know, uh, my I was an Air Force brat. And I, it was something I always wanted to do. I saw a show when I was a kid. I saw reruns of a show called Leave It to Beaver. And uh, uh -huh. and so I thought because Beaver and his family, Beaver got along with his family, were, and that, that was real, I thought that uh, my family was on television just like his family. And uh, my bubble got bursted. And uh, But my family put me in plays at a church like most people start out as gospel singers I started out as a gospel actor and uh, one okay. thing led to the other yeah one thing led to the other and uh, you know just, just it, see, for me success is not a destination it's a journey and you have to keep at it because the first time I made six figures I thought wow made it but 
you know, if you're not smart, that money won't last. So you got to keep grinding. So just, you know, uh, I started as a child actor, and I'm fortunate enough that I had the right teachers because they taught me the secret is to not become a huge star because people burn out on stars. But to be a working actor who's so versatile that people don't even know it's you from film to film. And that is what has sustained my career, is people are just now in the last few years realizing it's the same guy who's been doing all these different roles. Uh-huh, uh-huh, absolutely. Uh, I, <laughs> I saw a film with you in it and said, that's not him, is it? And that's lucky number 11. So I have to right. ask you, where did you get that character? Was that character written that way, or or did you do your own research and say, this is the way this character would be? No, the character was written just as a straight thug, a henchman. And so uh -huh. when I went in, I, I remember vividly I did the role, and it was so boring. And I looked around the room, and I said, that's what everybody's going to do who walks in the door. I said, let me show you what I do <clears throat> with a role and why I get paid. So if you want me, you don't come lowbrow, right? And they started laughing like this dude is so arrogant. But it wasn't arrogant. So I just popped in my, my teeth and turned my back, popped in my teeth, and frumped my clothes up, hiked my pants up real high, and then just did the, the role with a guy who wasn't that bright, who had a bit of a lisp, and they uh -huh. were on the floor. And so that's how I got that job. But, you know, I, I don't like to do what, most people would do. I don't even see periods and commas in the same place as all my competition. I just don't. I just move things around because that's what it is. Wow, that that is awesome. That is awesome. I, I tell you, when it, when I saw you and, and you you broke up that monotony, and you're absolutely right. That's what everybody else did, but you broke up that monotony. Now, let me ask you. You you were uh, standing next to I think it was. Uh, Dorian Missick, who we've also had on the show. Now, what did he? What was his take on what you were doing? <laughs> you know, I love the uh, uh, Dorian. He just got it. At the time, Dorian was this uh, upcoming actor from New York. <laughs> he had been tearing up the stage in New York, and he had a really, really hot buzz about him, and he had the talent to back it up. And so he was cool. He was. It didn't throw him one bit. He just jumped in there and just. It started flowing with me. I mean, you know, that's Dorian Messick is a bad dude. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, we have a caller on the line. A uh, caller from last four digits are 3772. Go ahead. Hello, Michael T. I just wanted to say I, I love you. When Thank you. you. Brother, that was, oh, my goodness, that character I love so much. That's my <laughs> favorite character for you. But I wanted to know, what is your favorite character? Who do you relate to the most? You know, I, I, there's something in, in all the characters I, I like. And first of all, thank you so much for the love, and I, I love you right back. And uh, <clears throat> I'm really happy to talk to someone who uh, has been affected by by the work that I've been doing, because I, I shoot from the heart. But yeah. the, 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 the character Bubba, I actually got from the Holy Spirit. And uh, I got him in prayer, and I was like, wow. And so this guy looked at me, and he, my assistant, and he said, you look strange today, T. I said, no, I'm cool, man. I just uh, I just have something real special I'm going to do with this uh, with this audition. And I did it, <clears throat> and, uh, and it really affected people. So I, I actually had a little supernatural help reaching out and touching people, so I can't really take all the credit for it. Well, yes, it did affect me. It was truly wonderful. Great. And then as far as favorite characters, I like something about every character, but there's a character in a film called uh, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and the, the character is Marcus. If you can see Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, which was directed by Kiefer Sutherland and written by Brad oh. Merman, you'll see, uh, you'll see that's my favorite character of all the characters I've done. And on television, yeah. the favorite character. Yeah, the favorite character is uh, a guy by the name of uh, Fearless Bobby Jones on a television show called Boomtown. That was that has been uh, my favorite television character so far. Oh wow! Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Nice talking to you. 
Good talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that's, I, I'm glad. I, I'm quite sure she will be. I'm I'm glad that that you um, really identify uh, about. Um, first of all, you're very. You seem to be very gracious towards your audience. You don't find a lot of that. Um, uh, sometimes actors. I, I'm not going to say all actors, but sometimes actors. Um, I feel get outside of themselves, as it were, um, and kind right. of forget where they come from. But you seem to always be gracious toward uh, towards people who show affection towards you. Is, is, well, how, no, how did I'm, you come about having that attitude? Well, it, it I put my pants on the same way as everybody else, and right. I, I come from the the background of what you do is not who you are. That's just what you do. Because that could change. You could change your mind, change your career. And then, you know, and you're still who you are. But I never saw myself as actor. I, you know, I never wanted to be famous. I just wanted to be different people and get paid and make a whole lot of money. But I still wanted to be able to go out and get a hot dog. So <clears throat> I meet people and they're like, oh, 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 my God. And I just calm them right down and go, hey, 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 shh, shh, come on, come on. <laughs> You know, it ain't, it ain't all that. What's happening, you know? And then bring it right back down to earth, because that's where I walk. I walk on the planet, you know? But, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. yeah, but that's just real, because that's how it is anyway, even if I wasn't aware of it. it's I'm no different and no better than anybody else. I'm just, uh, I just have a different response, different set of responsibilities than most people, and that is to uh, elevate art and uh, make sure it, it touches and teaches, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I was really impressed, uh, again, with the research, and, and I want to give a shout-out to, to Sasha. Uh, yes. I is she on your PR team? Yes. Okay. Sasha's Sasha, so, Sasha's awesome. Sasha needs a raise. <laughs> Sasha's a bad girl, man. Sasha is Sasha's all, all over uh, it, okay? Yes, she She's is. She's all over it. Yes, she I, is. I really appreciated uh, dealing with her. So, you know, shout out to you for identifying, um, you know, a, a good PR rep, and shout out to her for being one because it's not uh, always the way. But uh, she's very that's approachable. Very nice. and, 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 yeah, I always, I always like to do that. And that brings me to my next uh, set of questions. At what point did you realize that you needed a team? And I'll tell you why I'm asking. I also help people with uh, PR and do some management on a limited basis um, with the management just because I'm just one person. But at, at some point, and I tell all actors this or, or all artists, at some point if your career is elevating, you need more than you. There's, and that's why it's called show business. So right. at what point would you recommend to our audience members uh, people just don't know. Sometimes people, I find people just getting into it saying, okay, I need a manager. No, 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 wait. <laughs> First, you don't have money, okay? <laughs> right. I, I can't live off a handshake. Um, so when did it happen for you, and then what difference did it make in your career? Well, uh, it's important to have a team, and you and, and you have to remain cognizant of the fact that it's not just you, <clears throat> By the time people see me on television, so many other people have been involved by the time I get on screen. There's attorneys who make sure the agreement is right and is, is mutually beneficial. There's an agent who's out there grinding. My agent doesn't sleep. You know, David Rose, this cat doesn't sleep. And there's a team of guys over there, you know, guys and girls that are always grinding in New York and L.A. to find the right projects that fit my personality and what I want to do with my art. And then there's Sasha Stoltz, who is from Toronto, Canada, but Sasha is like, her arms reach out in all these different directions like a spider. I mean, Sasha's got it covered with the promotional uh-huh. stuff there, too. And uh, But it always takes a team, and no actor should ever see themselves as an island. Every move and every decision you make as an artist, music, or whatever... It reflects on the people who represent you, the people who are related to you, and the people who call you friend. So you always make your decisions based on how it affects the world at large. You know, sometimes it's just a money gig, but I still elevate it because it's it's nothing new. It's something I've done before, like playing a cop. Okay, here's the 46th cop I've done. 
you know, so let's figure out a way to elevate it and not embarrass my my team, my people who love me and call me friend, family, business associate, etc. So just remember, you're not an island. No person is an island, you, you know, it, it, and everybody's watching you all the time, and you just don't forget mm-hmm. it. And when you started your management team, or or your first manager was was that a family member? No, my first manager was a uh, a woman who used to sing background for Ray Charles, a woman by the name of uh, um, God. I'm I'm dropping her name right now. Uh, I probably shouldn't say her name, but anyway, this woman who who uh, sang background for Ray Charles. I had a dance group. And she managed us for a while, and then I realized we didn't need a manager because I was doing all the work anyway. But my first <laughs> inter- and my first yeah. acting manager was a guy by the name of Philip Miles, who was amazing manager, wonderful. And <clears throat> his this guy left no stone unturned. He was a brother from Philly, and he wore a safari hat. And on his business card it said, "It's a jungle out there," you know. And, <laughs> and that was just Philip. That's just how he rolled. And Philip really changed my life because he 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 taught me a lot he was an older brother but he taught me a lot about how to carry yourself how a deal is done how to get yourself a raise when you're in the room auditioning how to position yourself for a raise so your team can actually negotiate for more money than you got last time so he taught me all those things which one day i'll put in a book but i teach my students those things you know and it works. Oh, so so you're a coach as well? Yeah, I I run a, a, a an acting workshop twice a year. It's called the Character Workshop. I teach ten working actors, and uh, because I don't want to teach them acting from the ground up. Once once you learn to act, I can help you get over different mistakes and things like that. But I teach them character how to create a, an unforgettable character. It's called the Character Workshop, and I do it twice a year. So is it on the east coast or west? It's it it uh I do one uh the last the last one I did in uh Nashville, Tennessee. So I'll do one mm. in the south and then maybe one on the west coast or I'll do one in Vancouver and then maybe one in New York. It just kind of kind of depends, you know. But uh but uh-huh. I'm all done for the year. But next year I'll pick two cities and then I'll go and teach actors from those cities and I'll I'll stay 3 weeks three to four weeks, and do my workshop twice a week. Okay, and, and how does someone uh, become in, in, involved in it or, or participate in this workshop? You only you only train ten, so the, the competition's got to be fierce. Right. Well, everybody auditions, and uh, I'll pop up. At, if, if there's a, a film festival in your community, I would do it up to four times a year, but if there's a film festival in your community, just ask the film festival to invite me down to teach the character workshop because that happened in Nashville with the Nashville Black Film Festival, and they paid uh-huh. my, they paid for me to be there, so the, the workshop was actually free because it was <gasps> under, the veil, under the veil of the uh, Nashville Black Film Festival. So the students did not Ooh. have to come up with the money to pay me. Oh, that is phenomenal. Yeah. That so, is so, phenomenal. Yeah, you know wow. what? You can, you can, you guys can hit me on Facebook and let me know you're interested. I have uh, Sasha to help me out and uh, and my wife, Sandra, so we'll get it coordinated. If I can get enough interest in your area, then I'll, I'll bring the character workshop to your town, and we'll get it on. Oh, wow. Oh, well, okay, I'm writing this down right now. <laughs> yeah, you, you're coming to Harrisburg, okay? It's the okay. center of the universe. You'll love it here. <laughs> capital, Harrisburg is the capital of Pennsylvania. It's not Pittsburgh. It's not Philly. I don't know who started that rumor. It's Harrisburg. It is the center of the universe. You will be coming here. Pack your bag. Okay. We'll try to make All it right, a spring thing because it's too cold. <laughs> uh, let me just give a shout-out to all those excuse me, all those listening online, you guys can call in and speak with Mr. Michael T. Williamson. That number is 347-539-5805. I'll say it again, 347-539-5805. Now, when you dial in, listeners, if you'd like to talk 
Don't be shy. If you'd like to talk, press the number one. And that kind of raises your hand on my switchboard. So I see a couple of callers here now. You guys have not pressed the number one. If you press the number one, then I I know to give you a call. Remember, uh, this is a uh, family show. (laughs) I know how sometimes the the women get when I have the men on the show, and I have a, a quick, you know, finger here, so I'll turn you off in a minute if you're a little disrespectful. Mind your manners. We're on with Mr. Michael T. Williamson, who just mentioned that he has a wife, Sandra. I did not know yes. that. So, yeah, my uh, wife is Do you have Atlanta, children Georgia. as well? She, my oh, wife okay. is a commercial yeah. actor, and she's from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, we have two daughters. I have three daughters, but my wife and I have two daughters together. They're 13 and 12. Wow, wow. Now, what's life like for, I I always wanted to have a show with just wives. Like, I, I want, I would like your wife on the show and, and Denzel's wife on the show, because as a woman, I know why I'm not married to a, a good-looking actor. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty, I'm telling you that now. So, you know, I just, I always appreciate uh, men like yourself who always, you know, give a, a nice shout out for the wives because, um, you know, that's a, that can be a little, you know, a little touchy for me. Uh, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. Hey, listen, Michael T., we have another caller on the line. Caller right. from 0974. You are on the air living a dream with Mr. Michael T. Williamson. Go ahead. Hello, Michael T. I love the fact that they call you T. Can yes. I call you T? Yes, you yes you may. Well, T. First of all, like the other caller, Bubba, it was just a fabulous, fabulous character. But what I want to know is, what got you from acting to directing, and which do you enjoy the most? Well, oh, I, I enjoy them. Thank you so much for the for the love, the Bubba love, as I call it, and. Uh, I, I actually um, uh, enjoy both. The my first love is acting, but I think my greatest love is filmmaking because I get to hire talented people I believe in and bring them all together to fulfill a vision, mm-hmm. and that I like because as an actor, I normally travel with two other guys. <clears throat> I have a security guy uh, huh? who travels with me, and then I have my production partner James who travels with me. And uh, mm-hmm. so it's normally the three of us. But as a director, I get to hire like 40 people, you know. So mm-hmm. that I really, really dig. I like it a lot. Yeah. So does it bother you that you have to be away from your family so much and don't, being so busy? Uh, that's the tough part. But, but, you know, my family, they get it. And I, I'm home. I'm away from my house no more than two weeks. Uh, that's the way I structure my deals. If uh, you want me to come and do your project, then I'll have to get home every other weekend, or uh, mm-hmm. my family has to come to me. So you'll have to buy tickets to bring them to me. So, oh, wow, I that's try to great. Take it, yeah, I try to take mm-hmm. it easy on the production, but that's the way I've been rolling for years. And the only time I've ever been away from my family for longer than two weeks at a time was uh, in Africa. But my wife joined me for 10 days after I was there for a month. Mm. So that, you know, you just make it work. You just mm-hmm. keep in mind that, you know, you're going to be springing this big fat check home. So, you know, everybody stays focused and uh, and we just make it work. Mm-hmm. Thank you, caller. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I look forward hey, to and, seeing and, you on the screen again. Thank you. And before you go, listen, you mentioned Bubba. So did the first caller. Uh, I actually have my own seasonings and spices. I have a website, an online store called BubbaStyle.net. Really? Yes. You've had Cajun style, you've had Southern style, but you've not had Bubba Style. So I make all natural seasonings. So check out BubbaStyle.net. Check us out. I will. Yeah, and then send a note that I talked to you on the show, and I'll stick something in the uh, I'll stick something in the box for you. Thank you. I will do All right, that. If I get off the air, thank you. All right, cool. <laughs> well, can I? I want something in the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to do it. How did How'd you bypass me? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Let me let me ask you about that, uh, 
Bubba, I know that Bubba has been such a, an, a part of your life. Right. What? What's the question I want to ask? It, has it ever been overwhelming to the point of just, you know, have you ever felt like you were stuck in the box? No. No, never. It uh, because I change characters all the time in the industry. It, fortunately for me, it wasn't the first, second, or third job I'd ever done. I had I had done 200 uh, different episodes of television by the time I did Forrest mm -hmm. Gump. So people knew what I did. I'd done some movies, but I'd done so many hours of television. Like I said, over 200 hours of television. So people knew that uh, the industry actually knew that I was a real guy. The uh, I was I was an actor playing this character <clears throat> but huh? th it's it's interesting because that character almost uh, a lot of people didn't get it the publications and things for example Jet Magazine my former manager she called Jet Magazine and, and tried to get me a cover and they said oh no he's too ugly and I'm listening on the <gasps> speakerphone and I was like wow and, they, and the woman actually said that I was too ugly that I wouldn't be getting a cover. And she said, do you have any idea what he really looks like, that he's he, he was uh, playing a character? But they would not hear it. They would not hear it. So after Forrest Gump, it's like the black publications just couldn't get behind the fact that an actor played that role who looks nothing like that. So, you know, I, I lost a little momentum. I think I could have accomplished a couple more things, but uh, it was my own people. You know, kind of like like Whoopi when they picketed her uh, her movie, huh? you know, mm -hmm. and then had her movie shut down. You know, the color purple they picketed it and picketed it and stuff like that. And it's like you can't hurt your own people. You got to pay attention. You know what I mean? Because cause everything black folks we get our hands on, we take it to the highest level. So, you know, that's basketball. That's that's fashion. That's medicine. It's whatever it is. We just we're very blessed people, so we always take it to the highest level. So people just have to stay open minded and not close doors when they see something new that they've never seen before. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. And and that really yeah. upsets me because you know <laughs> we we are pe people of various shades, styles, likes, dislikes. Hey, there is a <laughs> there are several bubbles out there. Should they not be represented? I know, you know, should I their face not be on the main? That really upsets me. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Yeah. I'm, now you got my blood boiling. <laughs> so it's probably a good time to take another caller. All right. <laughs> caller, right. your last four digits are 8048. You are living a dream with Jay Blair Brown and Mr. Michael T. Williamson. Go ahead. Hello, Jay Blair and Mr. Williamson. First Hi. of all, I'm so sorry I'm calling in late. I've. I had it on my calendar. I really wanted to make this um, this show today, but and I, my question has probably already been answered. So please excuse me, but I am. No, go ahead and I, ask your question. <laughs> okay, I wanted to know what are what is the one high point of your career and the lowest point of your career, and why? Oh, oh boy. boy, let me see. Uh, the highest point of my career is when that check comes to the mailbox. <laughs> and you your wife that and your family. That, listen, baby, that is always a highlight, okay? And, and okay. Uh, I would say the the low point of my career is when I see uh, art sink to a very low level, like uh like women on record being called the B word and the H word and stuff like okay. that. That okay. to me, it turns me off because when I was a kid, we all were striving to be like a Bill Cosby or Sidney Poitier, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Diane Carroll, you know, that level. And to see art sink to these new lows like it has yeah. in the last few years, it, it really, uh, to me, that's like a low point because I consider myself a true representative of of the black face on Hollywood. And then when I see other people uh -huh. taint that face, it just it gets under my skin. So I, I hope that, uh, and you said my career, but I, I consider it all 
uh, uh-huh. a contribution and and myself a contributing a contributing factor. But uh, you know that check in the mail is always a hot, and uh, you know being applauded by oh, you your peers. Yeah, or you know, a people lot of stopping me on that. the street. Yeah, or people <laughs> stopping me on the street asking, you know, asking if they can take a picture with me, stuff like that. That's a high point because you know you affected oh, that's somebody. Good. That's really good that you feel that way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you for your call. And best wishes for you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Wow, that is wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I, I too am, am just appreciative of your graciousness. Um, I, I wanted to get back, though, to to what you said about um, Baba and the, and the problem of you getting on uh, magazines. Now, I I don't want to ask which hurts more, uh, whether it's from, you know, someone from another culture or your own, because, you know, that's a personal thing. But I do want to ask, have you had that same backlash from other cultures, or or have you found that other cultures have embraced Bubba more readily than your own culture? Well, I uh, I've not had that issue with other cultures, and and ironically, on the phone, this person from Johnson Publications uh, told my manager, and I'm listening. She said, "We are not." trend setters we are trend followers and I sat there and I looked at my manager and I was embarrassed that I was so hopped up to get on the cover of like Ebony and Jet and Mm -hmm. my manager calls on my behalf I'm in the hottest movie in the country you know in the on the on the on the earth at the time and couldn't get arrested by my own black publications and so for me it it I don't get judged like that with other cultures, not at all. I mean, Latin people, you know, they, man, I have such a huge Latin following and I'm so blessed by it. But now, you know, it's all changed. You know, black folks see me now and they're like, oh, my God, what's up? I'm like, hey, what's happening, bro? How you doing, sister? <laughs> right. But it, it wasn't that way when I was at, like, when, when Forrest Gump was, like, the hottest movie on earth. I couldn't, I couldn't okay. get arrested by my own people. But that's you know it is kind of is what it is, man. You know, if people, we all grow, been, we all live, and we learn. Have Have you been on Jet or Ebony since then, with other films? Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> I didn't do. I haven't done. I haven't done a an Ebony cover, but that's cool. I've done other covers. You know what I mean? I've I've uh, yeah. had some nice spreads in GQ. And different magazines like that, you know. So, it's 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 cool. It's all working out. Everything is good. good like I said, good. you live and you learn. But I figured mm-hmm. Flavor Flav could get a cover. I know I could get a cover, but I couldn't. Man, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have another caller. Caller from nine three three one. I think this is an old friend of mine. Go ahead, caller from nine three three one. Hey there, Jay. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Leonard? I am fantastic. I knew you would call it. Hey, Michael T., I want to introduce you to another very fine actor, Mr. Leonard Dozier. And when he found out you were on the show, he Facebooked me and said, oh, your show is just great. I'm just so happy. (laughs) He's like one of my favorites, all time favorites. So go ahead, Leonard. Do your talking. Yeah. Uh, first of all, excuse the background noise. I'm here in New York, and as you know, in New York, there's never any quiet. So, uh, right. <laughs> but Michael T, um, I, I, you know, first, first and foremost for me, I said to Judith the other day, I said Michael T. Williamson is my hero. And you know, when I came up as an actor, I think the first time I saw you, brother, was uh, actually in Forrest Gump, and then afterward, he. I was sophomore, junior in high school. At the, you know, pretty much at the point of beginning my career. And at that point, literally, you were like not only just sort of a, an actor figure for me, but a surrogate father. Oh, and, that's very No, I, and, I, and I mean that in the truest sense of the word. You have been single-handedly, even the, the leaps and bounds that I've made in my own career, I attribute 40% of, you, 40% of it to you, unbeknownst to you. Um, wow. And, and you've just been a tremendous, tremendous inspiration to me as an actor, uh, and there's so many. Basically, there's also a lot of parallels in our lives. I understand that you know I, 
doing research on you as a kid, I, you know, you came from the basketball world like myself and left basketball to pursue acting. And so I said to do that the other day, I said, no, we have some parallels too. So it's just right. interesting. Huh? It's just a real honor to uh, talk to you. And I guess if I do have any question for you, it's, uh, is there any role or character that you, that you want to play that you haven't played yet? Uh, yeah, there's a, uh, a gentleman I met, and first of all, Leonard, thank you so much for the love, man. And, and I, I and and while I have an opportunity to say it, I just want to wish you the absolute finest with your career, and and I hope that your career continues to blossom and grow branches, and that you continue to prosper and and be in health, brother, as you as you uh, stack it up, you know. But thank you, uh, yes, yes, there there is there are a couple of roles that I would like to play. One is Donny Hathaway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the and and the other is a uh, an actor who I had the privilege of meeting back in the seventies and this an early uh late seventies and this guy he his name was uh Lincoln Perry, but they called him Step and Fetch It. Oh, okay, yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That wow. for me is a dream role because he was the first black movie star but he was so despised by his peers for huh? playing that silly character. It's no different than characters people like Red Skelton did or Jonathan Winters or any people like that. It was, it was just a caricature of a human being. He was making fun of what people perceived us as being. But he was the first black movie star, and he was such a lonely guy that he would have parties at his house and invite and invite people to his house, and they would other black folks would steal his silverware and his dishes and take them out the back door, and he would stand there and watch them because he wow. didn't want to say anything to them because he wanted them to come back the next time he wanted people to come over. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with this man's life, and uh, I think he's a very, very brilliant and misunderstood artist. And I just would like to do a film that sets the record straight on Step and Fetch It. Wow. Well, how can how can we help in making that happen? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, because well, see, the the, I, the what the studios do is they go by who's hot. They don't go by who's best suited for a role. For example, right, right. Hey, there's a couple of actors that would play Miles Davis to a hilt. One of those guys is Wesley Snipes. And the other is, is uh, there's another guy in uh, New York. His name is Michael. His last name escapes me right now. But he was in the Five Heartbeats. He played the <clears throat> the brother who got strung out on drugs and got kicked oh, out yes. of the Five uh -huh. Heartbeats. Michael Wright. Michael Absolutely. Wright is his name. Michael yeah. Wright is would be brilliant as Miles Davis, and so would Wesley Snipes. But what the studios tend to do is find out who's selling all these different records, and they would give it to uh, somebody... And I love this cat. This, I'm not dissing this guy. T.I. My boy T.I. would end up yeah. playing, Steph, you know, Miles Davis, and he, they don't even look alike. Or my man Absolutely. Terrence Howard. They don't even look alike. But that's what the studios do. You know what I mean? They go by what's hot. And we as a people have to start stepping up and saying, nah, no, uh-uh, no. But, you know, we'll make it happen at some point. You know, maybe I'll get to, to do Donnie Hathaway. And uh, and step and fetch it, but for me, those are like the last two, uh, two horizons that you know, the last two projects that I can think of that would really bring it completely home for me. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Hey, Leonard, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, Jay. Michael Pete, uh, best of wishes to your brother. Peace and love. Thank you, brother, man. Mitch, drop me a line, man. Uh, tweet me or, or Facebook me or go to BubbaStyle.net, check out my spices. Do something, man. Keep in touch because I'd love to come see your work. Likewise. I sure He's will. Phenomenal. I sure will. Absolutely. All right, Leonard. Thanks for the Take call, care, brother. brother. You sure too. Thing. All right. Bye. He is absolutely phenomenal. And, I mean, I have no, I have no investment in this brother at all, but I, I will I will co sign Leonard until the end. He that man is just phenomenal. So uh yeah, that's that's very kind of you. Do you do that often? Do you reach out to up and comers or, or people who you who you just feel might have something? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Always. It's um you know, I I uh meet people all the time who want to come out to California and do what we do. And sometimes I advise them to to do so and other times I advise them to wait longer and and sometimes I advise them to think about doing something different. Because you know, you can just tell that some people don't have the huh? heart to that's in that has enough endurance uh to, or thick enough skin to get stepped on all the time because it's it's about rejection you can't worry about the rejection part of it cuz you can be walk in and be great but you just may not work because of other people who've been cast before you and I've I've been in that position where I'm in the room directing the studio wants a certain actor and actress to play the father and and mom, and then this kid comes in and the kid is brilliant and you can't get you can't use the kid because they don't look anything like the mom and the dad and you go ah guys come on what is that so that happens all the time where brilliant people come in but they just it just doesn't work out for various mm-hmm. reasons yeah. Wow. Well, that's kind of sad, too. I, I also um, had heard that pass this on to an up-and-comer. I said, listen, it may not – don't take it personally. You can't take it personally or you'll just be crushed. Right. I said, you might not get the part because you're a size 32 and they only have a shirt size 36 or – you know, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. the way it, that's just the way it goes. You know, you're you're an extra large, and they only have a medium. So, you yeah. know, they're on a budget. You can't bring your own clothes. And, you know, I mean, there's there's just a lot of factors. And, of course, there's that nepotism thing that happens. But <laughs> I, I think you're absolutely right that the mental part of it, I think, is just as important as the ability or aptitude at it. Right, right. Absolutely, and people just have to remember that your attitude determines your altitude. You have to keep mm-hmm. a great attitude all the time. I mean, it's important because you've got a hundred people. Everybody's working long hours, and if you've got this person, this actor who's coming out of a plush dressing room, and they're complaining, and these other people have been out in the sun and the cold and the rain all day for like fourteen hours, they don't have a place uh. to take refuge. And you come out of your trailer grumping because your the tea is the wrong temperature. Of course they don't like you. You know what I mean. And of course they're not going to oh. shoot you. And, you, and, and you, they're going to find an ugly angle and shoot you that way and laugh. Because I know crew members and I know they've shot people whose noses weren't clean. They shot them at certain angles and never told them and stuff like that. So oh. you know you just got to be you got to be a good person because they'll oh. get you, man. They will get you. I got to tell you, I saw a film, and that is exactly what happened. And the whole time, and it was in the movies, so you know it was right. big. And the right. whole time, I'm saying, I cannot believe nobody said, "Dude, clean your nose." I mean, it was so obvious; it just made me sick. It, it, right. I won't say what the film was, but yeah, I, man, I, <laughs> for right. that to happen. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> That's real, because okay. you've, got, you've got the common folks grinding, busting their hide, and then you've got this, like, star person who's stuck on themselves. The starlet comes out of her trailer complaining, and hurry up, what's taking so long? And I got to go to the mall, and da, 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 da. And, man, the crew, they'll get you, boy. They will set you up. They will stick the sausage wow. to you. Like, it's funny. <laughs> how, how, how do you teach someone... You know, today's, I call them kids, uh, they're half my age, so they're kids, but today's kids, they don't, a lot of them don't have that training, that home training. Right. A lot of young ones don't have manners. They don't say please and thank you. They don't know anything except surviving, you know, and, and being rude to other people. So how do you take one of those kids, and and how do you train this kid to be, better on set towards, you know, the grip or the the makeup artist. What what do you well, say to those people? Well, that's the beauty of theater. I think every every person who wants to be in television and film should start out in theater because I agree. in theater everybody chips in. Everybody yep. helps to tech. 
you, if you hang lights, you build sets, you paint sets, you clean up your own dressing room, you take out your own trash, and it, it teaches you what it's really all about. So as you climb the ladder, you understand what those jobs are. But the people who go directly to the top, you know, because of nepotism or whatever, if they haven't been taught at home, there's really nothing you can do about that. It just That just kind of is what it is. And, uh, and I encourage any actor who works with an actor who's not nice, just do your highest level work so that your footage, when you do get your footage one day to put on your reel, your footage represents you as the actor you want to be represented as. And don't worry about those other people. Uh-huh. Very good. I started out in the theater, and I think that's one of the reasons I did have an appreciation for what goes on um, backstage because, you know, you can't help but uh, until you realize how important that newspaper sitting on the end table was, right. <laughs> you know, you you can't help but, but appreciate the prop person. You can't right. help, you know, but appreciate... Um, you know, like you said, the 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 guy who handles the lighting, because lighting is everything. If and if you're using the mic and the sound don't work, you appreciate those guys. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, you know, you know it's true. <laughs> you know it's, it's true. true. Absolutely. Okay, I have another question here. First, someone sent me a question earlier today when they found out that I was uh, interviewing you, and uh, he's listening in. I hope I said his name right. Have you worked with a crystal clear Roberson? Is that her yes. name? Yes. She's out of she's Atlanta. Brilliant. He wants to know. She's a very good friend of uh, Daryl Moore's, and he wanted to know what was it like. How did you enjoy your experience working with Crystal? Crystal is brilliant. Um, she, I, I actually saw a at a film festival. I saw this short film, and I got a chance to meet the director. And because I stuck around, I wanted to meet the director. So when all the people got away from her and she was by herself, I approached her and talked to her. We became friends. She comes by my mother-in-law's house every time I'm in Atlanta. We sit down downstairs in the den, and she hangs out with my whole family. She's actually here in L.A., and I hope to see her maybe tomorrow before I leave for uh, New Orleans on Wednesday. But she's brilliant. Crystal Clear is brilliant. She should be making, she just shot her first independent full-length feature, but she should be making big movies because she's the real deal. She she came up at Tyler Perry's studio, and uh-huh. uh, I don't think they had any idea what kind of talent was over there because she was working in the capacity of like a production assistant, and she just kind of kept it under the radar so she wouldn't offend anybody. But she's brilliant, man. She's the best director I've seen come out of Tyler Perry's camp. And he had no idea she was a director. You know, but she just she, wow. didn't want to get, okay. she didn't want to rub feathers the wrong way. So she just kind of kept her mouth shut and did what she mm-hmm. did. But I'd do a movie for her and with her at the helm in a, in a split second. She's awesome. Wow. Sounds like I need to have her on the show. I'm looking yeah, you for should. women. I yeah. I can't find women. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. Wow. But well, that's she's, okay. She's I'll, I'll, I'll try to start with her. I really will. Have, have you had Alfre Woodard on the show? I'm sorry? Have you had Alfre Woodard on your show? No. Do you know how I can get in touch with her? I love her. I adore her. Yeah. I uh, adore her. I will definitely make that a... She's one of my favorites. Yeah, she's she's, she she's the real awesome. deal. Yeah, I know how to find her. I'll uh, get her contact info to Sasha, and then have Sasha put you in touch with her. That would I would look. I already love you, but I will love you forever. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it. she's she's amazing. I, I wanted to is. talk to you because you've been in the industry for so long. What what trends do you see? First of all, did you did you ever think you'd see a time when someone would be able to to pick up a you know hundred fifty dollar Kodak high def cam and and do something big on on a free website like YouTube? And what what do you think about technology today? Where it's where it's been, where it's going, and what are you doing to keep up with it? Well, I uh, 
I, I love the fact that people can pick up a movie, uh, movie camera and just be creative with it and make their own films at home. That's where a lot of the, 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 the new uh, technology is coming from and, and the new styles of storytelling. They're coming from people who don't know what the rules are, and they're just uh-huh. telling stories the way they see them. And uh, so I applaud people who do that. And I never knew that the cameras would be as inexpensive as they are and shoot HD. Uh But I did know Uh that the future of the medium was no longer going to be film but video. Because in film school, that's what my professor taught me. And people would argue him up and down, and he just would tell you, I'm telling you, video is the future, not film, video. Is the oh. future electronic? But he saw that. Film. Yeah, he he knew it. He but that's what he told us back in the '80s. He was teaching us that. So so I I knew it w- would be video. But I love YouTube and and uh, 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 Vimeo and the different networks where you can go on. Now. In fact, I'm a writer director on a web series that's on YouTube. It's called Wigs. W I G S. It's Women in Greater Society. Uh, but Wigs. it stands for where, but it stands for where it gets interesting. But it's wigs, and all of these episodes. If you, if you go to YouTube forward slash wigs, you'll find a okay. hundred one hundred episodes of television shows. They're five to eight minutes long, and it features strong female leads. And uh, I have the privilege of being one of the writer-directors. I was invited on late in the season last year, and I'll be back this season, but writing and directing, so you'll get a chance to see my work as a writer and a director. And uh, you'll get to see the work of the lovely, talented Dawn Lewis uh, from a different world. I mean, she's yeah. in a capacity. Yeah, she's in a capacity that most people don't get to see her in, but I know she's fierce. And she's beautiful, and she's actually studying to do a play right now. She'd be someone else that would be great for you to talk to. Is is Dawn Lewis? So okay, I'll, I'll put you in touch yeah. with Dawn too. Yeah. But, oh, I would uh, love I, I, that. I, I would love that. Yeah, but, I really, you know, I like I said, I, I was in the theater. I've done over a hundred live performances. I mean, I was, you know, a real actress, and for whatever reason, I stopped doing that. But uh, my my point in saying all that is. I have such an appreciation for for women in the arts, and I've had producers on who are women. And I've, I just can't seem to find the the women actors, and, and and that brings me to my next point. Do you think, from from a, a black man's perspective, do you see the the unfairness in Hollywood towards um, different ethnic groups? and uh, gender-related issues like that? Uh, yeah, I, I see the missed opportunities all the time. And that's what I call them. I call them missed opportunities for the studios and for the artists in question because everybody has a different story to tell. You can, uh-huh. you can, get, you can get so much flavor. You've got Asian, black, Latino. You've got... Flavor, the Canadian flavor. You got South American flavor. You got African flavor. Jim, island flavor. It just you know goes on and on. And if you keep everything in this little narrow box, I consider it a missed opportunity. And just when things were about to get better, reality television burst it wide open. And that's why there are fewer actors working now than you've ever seen in history. Because uh-huh. they find they find these people who are willing to be foul on camera for a few thousand dollars a uh-huh. week, and in in the hopes of being foul and famous, and you know washed up people like you know athletes' wives that are they're not even wives anymore. They just they're not even wives. Yeah, <laughs> they're not even wives, but they get on TV and then they get to be foul and then. But all the actors' jobs are going away. That's where the jobs for the black actresses are going. They're falling by the wayside because of all wow. this stuff. Yeah, it's it's a trip, man. 
it's reality is the killer. But if you if you go to Wigs, where it gets interesting, like YouTube forward slash Wigs, and you uh, watch some of the episodes, you'll see a lot of the actresses that you haven't seen in a long time. I mean, you'll see Sydney uh-huh. Portier, who's the great Sydney Portier's oh, actor Lord. daughter. Her name is Sydney Portier, and she's on some uh-huh. of these shows. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. but you'll see them. Work, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the site the now. I'm very impressed. You have 88,000 subscribers, 16.6 million video views. That is right. amazing. Right. It's amazing. Right. When did this begin? Uh, last year. Okay. For, for you, it started last year. Or did the yeah, whole last year. Out? I started last year was the, in the fall, was the first season. And we shot oh my up until word. This, we, sh- we shot up until the spring this year, so we uh-huh. go back in less than a month. We go back into production, and I've written some more episodes that are uh, will will uh, I will hire people of color to come in, and because uh, they asked me to come on board to bring some flavor, and that's my middle name <laughs> is Flavor. All right. <laughs> I will be bringing the flavor, so just you know, just keep it locked. You know, check out Wigs, you know, YouTube, Wigs, the Wigs channel. And uh, uh-huh. I think you'll enjoy what we're doing with these uh, these strong female lead roles. Oh, I absolutely will. Now, how many, how many episodes are there? You know, there many? are, uh, the first season was 100 episodes. So, wow. This, yeah, but they're five to eight season. minutes long, you said. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah, so you can, yeah, but the whole point is, if you're waiting in your doctor's or dentist's office or waiting for an appointment, instead of picking up a magazine and picking up some germs, you can just jump on your little smartphone and watch a movie, and you're uh-huh. done with it in like five to eight minutes. And all these are designed so that you feel pretty, really good about yourself, or it hooks you so you want to watch the very next episode that follows. It's fun, I'm telling you. You will you'll dig it. Okay, okay, I'm going to watch it too. I'm, I'm absolutely going to watch it. So we're down to our last two minutes, unfortunately. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep up with you, definitely with your career, but I'm going to do all that I can to make sure you come here to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, okay. Center of the Union. Before okay. we go, if there's one bit of advice that you can give to someone who's just starting out in the industry on or ways not to fall prey to the scammers? What kind of signs should they look for, and, and how can they find a good uh, agent, uh, manager, something like that? What can you tell them? Well, the first thing you want to keep in mind is that you should never, ever pay anyone a fee up front to represent you. When they get uh-huh. you a job, then they get 10% of that. You should never do any dealings with anyone who wants more than 10%. An attorney gets 5% unless you pay them by the hour. So managers, agents, 10%, no more than that. And uh-huh. never pay anybody up front to represent you. If they get you the job, then you guys split up the dough. And you always get your check first and pay people right on time. Don't bank your money, and then miss paying somebody. That's pretty tacky. And the and the other thing is be very, very careful about what people consider paying your dues. Paying your dues doesn't always mean giving people all the rights to exploit you uh, from now on forever. Be real smart about it. Find an attorney or a law student or someone really smart to read your contract if you don't understand it, and uh, and only sign something you can live with, because as soon as you, as soon as you blow up, people will pimp you like you never believed. And then, and and wow. the other thing is, whenever you take pictures, look on the internet and get a work for hire contract. It's just a simple one page work for hire agreement, and you make sure. That, the, that you own the photography, you own the images that your kids, that you take, you make sure you own it because if you don't, as soon as you blow up, 
people are going to take advantage of you and start stealing from you, and you'll have no legal recourse. And that's about it. Just keep a keep a great attitude, stay prayed up, and always keep the light on. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, before we go real quick, what is that website? It's, uh, which one, mine, with the spices? Yes. The spices, yes. it's BubbaStyle.net. BubbaStyle.net. All right, all right. right. Michael T. Williamson, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I, I don't think you know just how touched I am and how grateful I am for you to come on to my little show here on Living the Dream with Jay Blair Brown. We will definitely keep in touch with you, and I will definitely wait to hear how I can get in touch with Alfred Woodard and Dawn Lewis. Okay, <laughs> you great. It and I have it recorded. <laughs> All right, great. So and, uh, so I actually made a note for myself, so as soon as I'm off the phone, I'm going to see if Alfred's number still works. I just talked to Dawn over the weekend, so I know how to get in touch with Dawn. But I'll make sure oh. Alfred's number is still good, and then uh, I'll, I'll just take care of it from there. Okay, and any time you're promoting anything, just let us know. I'd be more than happy to uh, put it out there. I'm real big on uh, Twitter and Facebook. I'll help you promote it. And I'll, uh, if you want to come back to the show, just let me know. It would be a pleasure to have you back. You know, thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. Continued success. May every thank single you. thing you touch turn to gold. Oh, I certainly, I pray so. <laughs> okay, thank you so right. much, Michael T., and we will keep in touch. You have a good I look day. forward to it. You too. Bye. Uh, bye-bye. That's all we have today. There will be no show next week, guys. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, go to Facebook. Like me on Facebook. You guys know where it is, Living a Dream Radio Show, and keep in touch with when my next show will be coming up in two weeks. That's all I have. Good day. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. most people would do. I don't even see periods and commas in the same place as all my competition. I just don't. I just move things around because that's what it is. Wow. That That is awesome. That is awesome. I, I tell you, when, it, when I saw you, and, and you, you broke up that monotony. And you're absolutely right. That's what everybody else did. But you broke up that monotony. Now, let me ask you, you, you were uh, standing next to, I think it was, uh, Dorian Missick, who we've also had on the show. Now, what did he? What was his take on what you were doing? <laughs> because... You know, I love the uh, uh, Dorian. He just got it. At the time, Dorian was this uh, upcoming actor from New York. <laughs> he had been tearing up the stage in New York, and he had a really, really hot buzz about him, and he had the talent to back it up. And so he was cool. He was. It didn't throw him one bit. He just jumped in there and just. It started flowing with me. I mean, you know, that's Dorian Messick is a bad dude. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, we have a caller on the line. A uh, caller from last four digits are 3772. Go ahead. Hello, Michael T. I just wanted to say I, I love you. When Thank you. you. Bubba, that was, oh, my goodness, that character I love so much. That's my <laughs> favorite character for you. But I wanted to know, what is your favorite character? Who do you relate to the most? You know, I, I, there's something in, in all the characters I, I like. And first of all, thank you so much for the love, and I, I love you right back. And uh, <clears throat> I'm really happy to talk to someone who uh, has been affected by by the work that I've been doing, because I, I shoot from the heart. But yeah. the, 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 the character Bubba, I actually got from the Holy Spirit. And uh, I got him in prayer, and I was like, wow. And so this guy looked at me, and he, my assistant, and he said, 
you look strange today, T. I said, no, I'm cool, man. I just, uh, I just have something real special I'm going to do with this, uh, with this audition. And I did it, <clears throat> and, uh, and it really affected people. So I, I actually had a little supernatural. So much more about you. I thought I knew all there was to know about you. And, of course, that was not the case. I mean, you know, going through, I'm, I'm big on IMDb. So going through that IMDb uh, page, I don't know who keeps that up for you, but they're doing an awesome job. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have my niece here with me. She's she's my niece's sister. And uh, she was going through it. She was like, Hill Street Blues, really? Hill Street Blues? Really? The White Shadow? I mean, she was so thrilled. And um, the, the one thing that she said to me, which was kind of a slap in the face to me, she said, um, well, I didn't know he was as old as he is. So I asked when you were born, and you're older than me. So I go, so you thought he was younger than me? And apparently she did. She thought you were uh, around her age. You look good. That's the reason why. <laughs> well, thank you. You know they say so, black don't crack. Yeah, that's right. That well, mine must have cracked. But uh, <laughs> she, she's forty, and she she really thought that you were her age. So you carry it well. You carry it very well. Um, uh, but I, I want to get started on this interview because our show really caters to up and coming independent uh, filmmakers and actors, and so it's really important that guys like you who have lived it, who's continuing to live it, you know, leave them with some hope and tell them, uh, you know, what, what you've done. Maybe someone can, can model their uh, pattern, their uh, career after yours, which is a, it's just stellar. So we want to get started on that. And, and, and just take it from the beginning. How did you get into acting? Well, you know, uh, my, I was an Air Force brat. And I, it was something I always wanted to do. I saw a show when I was a kid. I saw reruns of a show called Leave it to Beaver. And uh, uh -huh. and so I thought because Beaver and his family, Beaver got along with his family, and that, that was real, I thought that uh, my family was on television just like his family. And uh, my bubble got bursted. And uh, Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the J. Blair Brown Show, right here <laughs> on Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> I'm your host and biggest Pam here on Living a Dream with J. Blair Brown. You can call me Juice. I generally have a slew of announcements before I get into um, our interview with our esteemed guest for today, Mr. Michael T. Williamson, but uh, I'm just going to give you guys our dial-in number, 347-539-5805. Mr. Williamson is on the air with us. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. How are you? Oh, I, I am just fine now that I know you're on the air with us. You, had, <laughs> you know, you had, had my heart going a little pitter-patter because I said, maybe I should have told him to call in a little bit before the show goes on the air. <laughs> But you know that's that's live radio, so it, it keeps me uh, more on my toes. That's right. Now, that's right. It, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm excited to be on your show. I'm I'm really happy to be on the air with you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea. Last week I had a gentleman on. Uh, we were on with uh, Chaz Palminteri, ah. and someone who apparently knew you. And he started going on and on about you and finally said, well, this is not about Michael T. Williams. <laughs> oh, that's and that funny. is Mr. Tony Spiridakis. Oh, yes. Okay. I know Tony very yeah. well. I, I miss Tony. I haven't gotten a chance to see him too much. Well, he has such a high accolades for you, Till. I was wondering, well, maybe I should have had Michael T. on the show before I had Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he went on and on and on, but uh, he just high regards for you. Oh, that's uh, now, very kind. You know, I, I have to apologize because um, in doing the research to have you on the show, I found out... But my family put me in plays at a church. Like most people start out as gospel singers. I started out as a gospel actor. And uh, one okay. thing led to the other. Yeah, one thing led to the other, and... Uh, you know, just, just it, see, 
for me, success is not a destination. It's a journey, and you have to keep at it. Because the first time I made six figures, I thought, wow, made it. But, you know, if you're not smart, that money won't last. So you got to keep grinding. So just, you know, uh, I started as a child actor. And I'm fortunate enough that I had the right teachers because they taught me the secret is to not become a huge star because people burn out on stars. But to be a working actor who's so versatile that people don't even know it's you from film to film. And that is what has sustained my career is people are just now in the last few years realizing it's the same guy who's been doing all these different roles. Uh-huh, uh-huh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I saw a film with you in it and said, that's not him, is it? And that's lucky number 11. So I have to right. ask you, where did you get that character? Was that character written that way, or or did you do your own research and say this is the way this character would be? No, the character was written just as a straight thug, a henchman. And so when uh-huh. I went in, I, I remember vividly I did the role, and it was so boring. And I looked around the room, and I said, that's what everybody's going to do who walks in the door. I said, let me show you what I do <clears throat> with a role and why I get paid. So if you want me, you don't come lowbrow, right? And they started laughing like this dude is so arrogant. But it wasn't arrogant. So I just popped in my my teeth and turned my back, popped in my teeth, and frumped my clothes up, hiked my pants up real high, and then just did the the role with a guy who wasn't that bright, who had a bit of a lisp, and they Uh were on the floor. And so that's how I got that job. But, you know, I, I don't like to do what much will help reaching out and touching people, so I can't really take all the credit for it. Well, yes, it did affect me. It was truly wonderful. Great. And then as far as favorite characters, I like something about every character, but there's a character in a film called uh, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and the, the character is Marcus. If you can see Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, which was directed by Kiefer Sutherland and written by Brad oh. Merman, You'll see, uh, you'll see, that's my favorite character of all the characters I've done. And on television, the yeah. favorite character. Yeah, the favorite character is uh, a guy by the name of uh, Fearless Bobby Jones on a television show called Boomtown. That, was, that has been uh, my favorite television character so far. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you, caller. Thank You're you. Welcome. Nice talking to you. Good talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that's, I, I'm glad. I am quite sure she will be. I'm I'm glad that that you um, really identify uh, about. Um, first of all, you're very. You seem to be very gracious towards your audience. You don't find a lot of that. Um, uh, sometimes actors. I, I'm not going to say all actors, but sometimes actors. Um, I feel get outside of themselves, as it were. Um, and kind of forget where they come from, but you seem to always be gracious toward, uh, towards people who show affection towards you. Is, is, well, how, no, how did I'm, you come about having that attitude? Well, it, it, I put my pants on the same way as everybody else, and right. I, I come from the, the background of what you do is not who you are. That's just what you do, because that could change. You could change your mind, change your career, and then, you know, and you're still who you are. But I never saw myself as actor. You know, I never wanted to be famous. I just wanted to be different people and get paid and make a whole lot of money, but I still wanted to be able to go out and get a hot dog. So I meet people, and they're like, oh, 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 my God. And I just calm them right down and go, hey, 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 hey. 